Hello and welcome to another official Hyperspin tutorial with the AV Archivist. Today we'll be learning how to add new systems to our setup. You probably noticed that Hyperspin comes with a number of systems already on the main menu. This is only a fraction of what it's capable of though, and you can add as many items as you'd like. Hyperlist currently has about 200 systems in its ever-growing roster, but you're not limited to games. Pretty much anything you can run on your computer, you can run through Hyperspin. First, we need to open Rocket Launcher UI. In the top left corner, you'll find a green plus icon with which we can add a new system. Select the icon, then give your new system a name. Since the Commodore Amiga is in Hyperlist, we want to make sure we match the exact Hyperlist nomenclature for the system. Next, select the Add Before drop-down list, and choose where you'd like your system to appear on the main menu wheel. As noted, your new system will be added before the selected system. This can easily be changed at a later time. When done, click Next. Now we need to define our emulator for the system. If you're unsure, this can always be set up later. For the Commodore Amiga, I know we'll be using the WinUAE emulator, so we'll click the hourglass and select it from the menu. Click Next once you're done. As we've seen in earlier tutorials, Rocket Launcher needs to know where your ROMs for the system are stored. Whether or not you have your ROMs yet, we can define this path now. First, go to your Hyperspin ROMs folder. Press Ctrl, Shift, N to make a new folder and name it to match the system, again being careful to use the exact same nomenclature as Hyperlist. Once done, head back to Rocket Launcher UI, click the green plus icon to add a new ROM path, browse to the folder we just created, and hit OK. As always, you can define as many paths for your ROMs as you need to, and you can edit or remove paths as required. Once you're satisfied, click Next. Though Rocket Launcher is capable of it, I strongly advise against generating a database from the ROM path. If you take that route, there's a lot of potential for there to be issues down the road. If you're setting up a system supported by Hyperlist, you'll likely have no problem finding a pre-existing database therein. If you'd like, you can manually add the database later, as we've seen in previous tutorials, or you can simply import the XML. To do so, head to Hyperlist and download your system's database to a temporary location, like your desktop. In Rocket Launcher UI, select Import Database from File, then click the magnifying lens and browse to the XML you just downloaded. With this method, Rocket Launcher will create the appropriate Hyperspin database folder for the system and move the XML to it. Click Next when you're done. Review the choices you've made so far and click Finish, then Yes to finalize the process. As you can see, the Commodore Amiga is now included in our system list. If we open Hyperspin, we'll find it in the same location on our main menu wheel. Essentially, the Rocket Launcher UI Setup Wizard has added the Commodore Amiga to our Hyperspin Database's main menu, mainmenu.xml file. If you ever want to rearrange your main menu after setup, you can adjust the order here, like so. Rocket Launcher UI has also generated a settings file for the new system in the Hyperspin Settings folder. Finally, in Hyperspin Media, it's created the folder structure we'll need in order to add art, themes, sounds, and video later. If you remove a system from mainmenu.xml, it won't show up in your main menu anymore, but all of the databases, settings, and media folders we just discussed will remain safely intact. Should the need ever arise to delete a system in its entirety, you can do so by manually removing those associated databases, settings, and media, or you can use the Rocket Launcher UI Delete Selected System option. All we have to do now is add our ROMs and set up our emulator as per the earlier videos in this series. The WinUAE emulator we'll be using for the Commodore Amiga is a lot more complicated than the examples we've discussed so far, however. As such, the next tutorial will be a step-by-step -step guide to its setup. We also still need to download and customize the system's media. We'll be covering this over the next few tutorials as well. With the fundamentals we've learned today, we're now able to comfortably add any system we'd like to our Hyperspin setup and manage our systems with ease. I hope you found this guide to be useful and informative. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section, in the Hyperspin forums, or on Facebook or Twitter. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.